The TV reality show Gold Rush has been a fan favorite for a long time now. When we talk about Gold Rush, we think of the name Tony Beats, the king of the Klondike. With his grit, determination, and a golden touch, Tony Beats has amassed a fortune in the unforgiving Alaskan wilderness. But have you ever thought, how rich is Tony Beats? How much does he make from the show and from all the gold that he finds? To find out about his earnings, we have to first look at his background. Tony Beats from Gold Rush is a gold producer of the Klondike who has carved his name into annals of mining history. On December 15, 1959, he was born in Wijdens, Netherlands. Later, Tony moved to Canada in quest of better job prospects after working for his family for many years and earning money by milking cows. In 1984, Beats started mining in Dawson City, Yukon Territory, following three years of employment in the construction industry. His hiring of local kids is well known as he currently operates the Tamarack Mine. Those who can hack the work, regardless of the fact that many cannot manage it, become essential members of the team and the Beats family. And that's a law. The Maverick began appearing on the show during the show's second season when he was advising cast member of Todd Hoffman about drilling test holes. Now to talk about his personal life as kids, Tony got to know Minnie, the woman who would become his wife. Growing up in Bergward, Friesland, the two lived next door to one another. In 1978, they started dating. And following 18 months of dating, Tony made the decision to relocate to Canada, and Minnie followed him. Tony and Minnie were 24 years old when they got married, and together they had four kids, Kevin, Monica, Mike, and Bianca. Regretfully, their daughter Jasmine passed away in 1992 at the age of two and a half. The Beat family business involves all of the children, with Minnie managing the bookkeeping and paperwork. A winter residence in Arizona is owned by Tony and Minnie, and Beats is said to own a Mercedes convertible that is estimated to be worth $145,000. His journey began in the Netherlands, where he left his farm in pursuit of fortune and glory in the Canadian wilderness. Driven by tales of miners earning $1,000 per week or more in the Yukon, Beats embarked on a life-changing adventure. It was only a matter of when and how. Beats' determination to prosper goes back to his early teen years in the Netherlands. After his father suffered a debilitating accident, Beats had to take over the family farm, which meant he often found himself in charge of men who were more than twice his age. In Tony Beats' own words, he reflects on his early rise to leadership. He became the boss at a very early age. He decided he had to become equal or better than the people who worked for him. His whole life, wherever he went, if he wasn't a foreman within a week, well, he's always kept one step ahead of the rest of them. Skeptical about the future of farming in the Netherlands, Beats and his new wife, Minnie, emigrated to Canada in 1980. Beats started out on a dairy farm near Salmon Arm, BC. Within a couple of months, a new goal had formed in his mind. But that's not all. Word spread through the Yukon like wildfire. Miners were raking in $1,000 a week, a fortune in those days equivalent to over $3,000 today. Tony Beats heard the whispers and saw his ticket to riches. Determined and undeterred, he set his sights on the same prize, driven by the promise of prosperity. Beats bought a plane ticket and flew up to Whitehorse, but he arrived too early in the season to get a gold mining job. So he returned to the farm for a few more months before exchanging the milking machines of BC for the oil pipelines of Alberta. While in the oil patch, he finally landed a job in a Yukon gold mine, and he hasn't looked back since. Now let's talk about his early life hardships. Starting as a humble machine operator, Beats toiled in the Tamarack mines, driving earth movers. Tony's mining career took off when he began searching for gold in Dawson City. He struck gold when he found 3,600 ounces of the precious metal in Eureka Creek in 2018. That haul alone was worth around $4.39 million. But Tony's legacy extends beyond mere gold. He is the owner of the Tamarack Gold Mines in the Klondike region, Yukon, Canada. His mining operations are a family affair, with his wife, Minnie, by his side. Minnie not only keeps the accounts, but also serves as the spokesperson and model for Gorilla Cookies. His relentless work ethic and determination eventually paid off. Over the years, he built an impressive mining empire, and today, he stands as one of the most successful miners in the region. Today, Beats owns one of the largest privately held placer gold mines in the territory. But if anyone thinks he's riding the gravy train to riches, they can think again. Throughout the seven-month gold mining season, Beats and his crew work 12 to 14 hours a day, often in punishing weather conditions, battling constant breakdowns and the clock. 
But let me tell you this, gold mining is a hands-on operation. If you're not out there every day, it's not going to happen. Despite such heroic efforts, success is never guaranteed. Tony Beats reflected on the unpredictable nature of his trade. The good ground really is gone. If one day you make a million bucks in this business, I suggest you hang on to it pretty tightly because you may need it next year. And that's how life works. If his on-screen persona is anything to go by, Beats is a tough man to please. Describing himself as a hands-on employer, he never passes up an opportunity to instill the importance of hard work and diligence in his children. While Beats thinks it's a risky time for newcomers to enter the business, he does not believe it is impossible. However, he encourages prospective prospectors to think small. On the other hand, what is Eureka Creek Mine? Nestled in the heart of the Klondike is Beats Crown Jewel. Here, he operates the Viking Dredge, a colossal floating industrial bucket weighing 350 tons. Beats acquired this historic dredge in Season 5 of Gold Rush for a cool $1 million. The Viking dredge had languished unused for 30 years until Beats breathed new life into it. However, the road to success was not without challenges. The dredge sank twice in six weeks, risking losses of over $1,000 per hour. Despite setbacks, Beats persisted, and the Viking dredge now churns through the rich soil of Eureka Creek, extracting gold. But Eureka Creek is just one facet of Beats' mining empire. He also oversees operations at Tamarack Inc., another significant claim he took over decades ago. His various ventures in the Klondike have contributed to a reported net worth of approximately $15 million. Now you might be thinking, how old is Tony Beats from Gold Rush? Well, he's 64 years old. And it's impressive to see him still working like his teenage. But that's not all. Coming to the phenomenon of Gold Rush, Tony Beats gained widespread fame through the Discovery Channel's reality television series, Gold Rush. The show chronicles the trials and triumphs of family-run placer gold mining companies. Tony's strong personality, leadership, and gold prospecting skills make him a central figure on the show. Beats is the richest cast member of Gold Rush, with a staggering $15 million in net worth. Parker Schnabel, his co-star, is next in line with a net worth of $8 million. Tony is a prime example of the American dream. He went from milking cows to mining millions. Besides that, where does Tony Beats live today? Tony and Minnie reside in a luxurious home in Maricopa, Arizona. Their house, purchased for $315,000, boasts incredible views from its wooden balcony. The Beats family enjoys the comforts of their Paradise Hill residence, surrounded by the rugged beauty of the Klondike. Whereas one of Tony's most significant accomplishments is the restoration and operation of the Viking Dredge. This colossal floating industrial bucket dredge weighs a staggering 350 tons. The Viking dredge had been dormant for 30 years until Tony breathed new life into it. Now, it churns through the rich soil of Eureka Creek, extracting gold. The Klondike gold mining legend isn't one to splurge on fancy cars. However, he does have a taste for quality. Here's a glimpse into his automotive world. Tony has a convertible Mercedes that is estimated to be worth $145,000. He doesn't show off his fancy cars, but this one is an evidence to his prosperity and enjoyment of well-made objects. Beyond cars, Tony's true passion lies in mining. He invests heavily in heavy-duty machinery. His fleet includes numerous trucks and specialized equipment used for his mining operations. These rugged vehicles are essential for extracting gold from the challenging Klondike terrain. But that's not all. His mining efforts primarily focus on the Paradise Hill claim. While he doesn't personally own land within the Klondike, he has staked claims to various areas, granting him exclusive rights to mine there. Naturally, he's built up enormous wealth and a considerable stake in land throughout his career. But fans like you are curious to know how much land he owns. Reportedly, he has his claim on Paradise Hill as well as Scribner Creek. Paradise Hill stretches for approximately 42,000 square meters, according to recent statistics. Fans have also calculated that he also has 163 claims in the Tamarack, Tony Indian Rivers. Another area where Tony has staked his claim is Scribner Creek. Although the exact size isn't specified, it adds to his extensive land portfolio. Now let's talk about Tony's gold rush career. Beats didn't start at the top and he climbed there. He even leased land to newcomers sharing his expertise and experience. Today he deals in millions of dollars worth of gold regularly and evidence to his unwavering commitment to the treasure hunt that is gold mining. But with time, rose rivalries. 
Tony Beats first burst onto the gold rush scene during season two. His initial role was advising fellow gold miner Todd Hoffman on the secrets of successful gold mining. However, it's his relationship with the young mining star Parker Schnabel that truly stands out. Schnabel leases land from Beats and their dynamic is anything but harmonious. Beats acts as an abrasive mentor to Schnabel, pushing him relentlessly. Their interactions foster a rivalry, one fueled by ambition, determination, and the pursuit of gold. While Schnabel hails from a gold mining family, Beats brings a grizzled, no-nonsense approach to the table. Their clashes make for compelling television, showcasing the high stakes and intense pressure faced by these miners. Beats and his colleagues are characterized as modern-day treasure hunters. Armed with million-dollar machinery, they scour the Klondike in search of the elusive yellow metal. Since his debut on Gold Rush, Beats has weathered many ups and downs in his mining business. Yet year after year, he returns to the rugged wilderness drawn by the lifestyle and the thrill of the hunt. His passion for the adventure, the freedom, and the pursuit of gold keeps him coming back, despite the challenges. Although Beats enjoys the wild Klondike lifestyle, there are repercussions when a business broadcasts on television. In one particularly noteworthy instance, a program clip led to $31,000 in fines for his organization. Even with its already significant environmental impact, mining can occasionally go too far. Regulators took issue with Beats and his crew's Viking baptism of a gold dredge machine, which involved dousing the nearby pond with petrol and setting it ablaze. If I state the facts generally, the financial compensation for Gold Rush's stars varies based on several factors, including the star's role, experience, and contribution to the show's success. In 2024, the estimated earning potential for the stars could range from $100,000 to $5 million per season. And this isn't it. Hear this out. Supporting cast members, including crew members, mechanics, and various team members, earn lower salaries. Their earnings range from $10,000 to $20,000 per episode. The star's income is not solely derived from their salaries. They often supplement their earnings through endorsements, public appearances, and merchandise sales, which can significantly boost their overall income. And if I talk about the show's success, the show has also opened up opportunities for the stars to invest in their own mining operations, further increasing their potential earnings. This allows them to capitalize on the exposure and expertise gained from Gold Rush. Meanwhile, the star's ability to expand their sources of income has also been made possible by the show's longevity. Some have dabbled in other commercial endeavor, like real estate investing or owning mining equipment firms. In its first season finale, Gold Rush Alaska was the most watched Friday night program in all of U.S. television among males aged 18 to 49 and women aged 25 to 54. However, throughout its 13 seasons, the show has consistently ranked among the top unscripted cable programs particularly strong in demographics like men aged 25, 54. And the fascinating part is that Gold Rush airs in over 170 countries and territories, attracting a loyal international audience. Parrot Analytics, a media measurement firm, reports that Gold Rush's audience demand in the U.S. is currently 17.8 times the average TV series. This means people are actively searching for and discussing the show online, indicating strong engagement. Besides that, Gold Rush is considered a pioneer in the docu-soap genre, blending documentary elements with reality TV drama. Its success has cemented the way for other shows exploring extreme professions and lifestyles. In the end, it's clear that Gold Rush has struck a chord with viewers around the world, and its enduring popularity shows no signs of fading anytime soon. As the Gold Rush continues to fascinate audiences, the financial fortunes of its stars remain as intriguing as the precious metal they seek. To always stay informed about the shows you love, subscribe to the channel we try to bring the latest and greatest from the mysterious world.